You were with a man for 10 years and according to you, you left him because of sex. Mm. If that's the case, die alone. It's the same thing you look at throughout history. You look at things like Satan and you look at women. Um, the two have been persecuted without real inquiry into why they're persecuted. It's just sort of an assumption. It's something we're told to do. Yeah, now you tell me what a real man is. Male who love God with all his heart, soul, and might, along with nothing else. Does feminism have a place in the Christian church? I have with me Reverend Ann Heyman, pastor of St. Paul Presbyterian Church in Los Angeles, California, and the Religious Coalition for Reproductive Choice. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for asking me. I appreciate you for being here. First, do you believe that human beings, that we are in a fallen state? Yes, we are certainly in a fallen state. And most people are under the spell of the matrix. But I'll let her continue, and later we'll hear Kevin Samuel's take on this matter, along with, of course, the Holy Scriptures. All glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the author and finisher of our faith, and without him, nothing is possible. Continue. Yes and no. I mean, I think we could do better. Absolutely. I don't think it's hopeless. Um, I'm... I'm encouraged, although these last few weeks have been pretty rough yeah. for the human, <laughs> for right. the human state. We we've hit a hit in my lifetime, probably an all-time low. So but, when you say yes and no, is either yes or no? Well, we we sin and we sin boldly, but we're forgiven, and I I guess I bank more heavily on the our ability to seek for, and get forgiveness than I do on the fact that we don't always do what what God expects of us. What is the fallen state? Well, I was going to ask you that question because I'm not quite sure what what your image of that is. Right, and I'll give my but it's kind of you are a Reverend, so I, I wanted yeah. to get your opinion of it, and then I'll, I'll follow up on it. For me, Jesus gave us really high expectations for our behavior, and then He modeled it for us. He showed us how to do it, and I think when we're not in a fallen state, we're living up to his expectations. And when we are in a fallen state, we're not. And so that fallen state is a falling away from God due to sin? Yeah. Due to sin. Yes. Um, is it possible to be born again of God and still sin? Yes. We all sin and fall short the glory of God. The Holy Scriptures is the survivor scrolls. Okay. You know, Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. There is no we, as this feminist mentioned, as though the entire human race of people are judged exactly the same. That's where they get the lie, all sin is the same. No, we already know because Adam sinned, all men die. Okay, the scriptures is a historical document a spiritual document about covenants and curses okay and there there are five major curses that we are all under to this day but i'll explain that in another video so it is paramount that we are not vague when addressing and assessing the intricacies of sin because romans chapter one more than any chapter in the Bible, expresses the framework for sin and its accumulation through the wickedness of men. Okay, but I'll have to explain that also in the next video. I came to a church that already existed to be their interim pastor actually eight years ago. It's, it's unusual to be an interim pastor for eight years, but we've been busy. Um, that, that was a pre-established congregation when I came, and there were men and women and children involved in this congregation, so I just stepped in to be their pastor. Was it headed up by a man prior to you? Uh, yes. It was, so you took a man's uh, I did. place, position there. I did. Um, were you called to become a minister, or did you go to school for it? Both. Both. And who called you? Oh, God called me. And God did. And, and how do you know he called you? I was in college, and I was trying to decide what I was going to do after I graduated. And, and there was a really strong sense that, that God wanted me to be a minister. There was no, there was really no, and I had been doing that pretty much all along. But I, um, 
I went to my pastor and I said, uh, you know, I'm thinking about going to seminary. And he said, well, if you want to go for your own edification, fine, go ahead, but don't <laughs> expect to be a pastor because churches don't like women ministers. I did go to seminary in 1975, and I've been employed as a pastor since 1978. So, and I've done all kinds of different ministries, but, but um, I, uh, and actually when I got to seminary in 1975, probably a third to a half of my class was women. Yeah. So I was kind of on that cusp of... of uh, Were, um, if God called you, why did you have to go to a seminary? Before she answers, ask yourself, and just use your imagination, where would this feminist be during the transatlantic slave trade and the proceeds shortly thereafter? Okay, because back then, feminism didn't exist. So what would she be doing with her time then? I just want you to ask yourself that. Because if you listen carefully to her backstory, and you just dissect and discern the truth from the words that are coming out of her mouth, you would understand that God did not call her. Okay, The color of her skin opened doors for her through white supremacists whom are the gatekeepers to seminary school. And because Esau has done and will do anything to continue dealing wisely against God's chosen people, she was afforded the opportunity to run a church of 95% black people. When there's an evil ancient spirit involved, he reinvents himself in human beings. Okay, less than a century ago, she likely would have been running a plantation with her slave master husband who raped his slaves, both male and female. I am a student of the word and I wanted to study everything I possibly could, primarily because I think the Bible has been used so extensively historically against women, minorities, other, category other, and I wanted to know how... How you could exploit the fragmentation of the black family into any opportunity for yourself whilst hiding behind feminist and civil rights ploys and cherry-picking scriptures to support your cause? Well, I knew how it impacted me. I wanted to know what I could do to possibly make that better or different. So you didn't trust that God who called you would also prepare, teach you, and give you what to say and do? I don't know what God was thinking. I spent 28 years living with prostitutes here in Los Angeles, and that was at God's behest. Now, <laughs> he had a great plan. It worked wonderfully, and I loved every minute of it. But I would not be willing to second guess at all God, God's, God's plan for me. There was a plan, no doubt about it. Yeah. Always has been, probably always will be. Were you surprised that God called you to be over men? No. The head of men? I have four younger brothers. I've always been over <laughs> on top of that. Yeah. I really have. Why would God put a woman the head of a man? Or men? I... I don't, I don't know, and I don't know that God really worries about that a whole lot, uh, because that's, I've, that's always been my situation in life. And I work very well with myth men. I do. You're not surprised that he would put you in uh, as head of men? Mm -mm. No. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you believe in that spiritual order of God? Probably not. You don't believe in that order. What is that order? Well, it's probably a male, <laughs> a male God and a male Jesus with men if you're doing the, the hierarchy thing, right. and somewhere down at the bottom, you're going to find women and children. So you don't believe in God and Christ, Christ and man, man over woman, woman over children? No. Why not? I don't even think it's scriptural, if you want to know the truth. Um, no, I, uh, I don't. I think we're all in this together. We're all children of God. We're all co-equal. We all have gifts that are given to us by the Holy Spirit, and we're expected to live those out. How are you going to represent God if you don't believe in his order? Okay. So we're going to come back to her response and listen to what Kevin Samuels have to say about the prosperity gospel. Because according to his definition for a high value man, such representatives employ feminist women like her 
who shaped the minds of the liberal, gullible black women described in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. I don't recall very many megachurches when I was growing up. I mean, I come from the Bible Belt, and we had churches on every corner, you know, Baptist, AME, Methodist, Episcopalian. I mean, we had churches. Then, the, the, and the more, we lit, the more strict the doctrine is, the smaller the church was. Okay, so I noticed when we went from church, we went from Baptist church. You know, we had one service. There were hundreds of people in the service, but not, but not these mega churches. But then when we went to Church of God in Christ, it went down to a small sugar shack. We're talking 70, 80, maybe 100, 200 people. And they were preaching from the Old Testament versus the New Testament. But then around the mid-90s, I, when I moved to Houston, is the first time I ever saw prosperity preaching. And what I noticed is these churches were massive. We're talking about 30,000 people. We're talking four services with you know, four to 6,000 people per service. We're talking about, you know, a church on the north side and on the south side, and the pastor is zipping back and forth in, a, in an arm, in a, a highway patrol escort down the HOV lane to the point to where he was actually flying between the helicopter between this church and that church. What was that in the 70s? We didn't have prosperity gospel because we had more moral. But prosperity gospel is appealing to people hearing, you're God's special angel. God wants things for you. God wants your best life. I watched my marriage fall apart in Potter's house. I, look, I was sitting on the aisle with several other married men, and what we were hearing from the service is what, the difference than what our wives were hearing. We were all looking at each other in the men's ministry like, she don't jump up like that at home for us, but she's jumping up like that for the preacher. I mean, in Potter's house, <clears throat> And the thing is, it also came down to the message. There's no accountability in prosperity gospel. It's all, you, you, life is entitled. It's your life. God wants the best for you. You know, I cannot tell you how often I heard him talking about the value, you know, single motherhood. I wasn't discussed. Even when I was went back to Oklahoma and, and you know, um, Mother's Day, it was all empowerment. There was never any you know, you got four kids by five dudes. This is wrong. But we could see it falling apart. But the thing is, women, more than men, like to be, have their ears tickled. And guys like this are charismatic. They're good performers. They're good preachers. They're good speakers. And they don't matter. Because here's the thing. What, what happens when you start preaching to people and getting what they want? Tides go up. I grew up in a church to where they had your family name on the back of the on the back of the bulletin. Every week they would have the ties. I mean, this was this was a business. But when the message started to change, the church got bigger and the ties went up. That's what I see on it because I I believe these women know that he's telling them what they want to hear because the reality of their own life reinforms that. But it doesn't matter in that moment. It's a fix. It's like getting your shot of Jesus. Both T.D. Jakes and this liberal Caucasian feminists are benefactors and agents of white supremacy and the crafty counsel of Esau, which is described in Psalm chapter 83. It is unclear to me whether or not Kevin Samuels understood that the so-called high-value man, his image and likeness, was empowered by Esau and his cultivated Babylonian, matrix-manipulated, godless society. Okay, the so-called man of monetary value has to put a battery in the back of these feminists in order for them to infiltrate and dismantle the black man's home. So, Mr. Jesse Peterson, what is a real man again? male who loved God with all his heart, soul, and might, along with nothing else. Oh, I believe in a whole lot of other stuff. Not necessarily that order, but I believe in a whole lot of other stuff. God is, is love. Is God a masculine spirit or feminine? No. Neither. It's a spirit, a power. A power. A, a force, a light. I, I don't think of God as male or female, either one. Probably more female than male. Are you either. coming up with these idea, ideas of your own or? 
because those are not God's ideas or his ways. Are you like making up your own rules? Oh, no. I have a lot. I have a, I have a master's degree in feminist spirituality. There are plenty of sisters out there who are in the same, same camp that I am. And are they making up their own rules? No, I think they're reading, I, I think they read history and scripture with a, a, a hermeneutic of suspicion because it was given to us one way and interpreted to, it as, interpreted to us in one particular fashion doesn't mean that that was the penultimate or the right uh, way to do it. And they've gone back, they've looked at the text, they've restudied the words, they've um, brought their own experience to bear on their reading of scripture and they've said, wait a minute. You know, I'm not sure that that's right, or how we, it's been interpreted to, interpreted to us is right. When they read the scriptures or whatever they read, <laughs> they're coming up with their own interpretation of it? Well, another interpretation. I don't know that it's necessarily their own. Where are they getting these ideas from? Who is, Study. Who is re revealing this to them? Study. Study is? Mm -hmm. So they trust their own intellect? Sure. And that's not a good thing to do. Why not? Because your own intellect will lead you astray. Because really? your, our own intellect is that of, our, of the deceiver. And he will cause you to believe whatever it is your ego needs to believe in order to deceive you. This is why in the book of Malachi chapter 1, God said he hates Esau. Okay, because Esau is worse than Adam. Esau is so fixated on cutting off God's chosen people that he permits his women to do the work of Satan because she has nothing to do at home. See that? And of course, the liberal Caucasian woman was a part of the Civil Rights Act, or at least an offspring of it. I don't feel deceived. You don't? No. Are you married? No, I'm not. Have you ever been married? No. And why not? You know, I think I just forgot to do it. So you are part of the Feminist Agenda Network. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the purpose of that organization? Well, actually, it's a, it's a group of Presbyterian women who are feminist in their thought, in their politics, probably both, and in their faith. And we get together occasionally. We take on mission projects that we that come across the spectrum. We get involved in, in Presbyterian church things when we see an opportunity to do that. Um, we read books together. We study together. We, um, we meet. What is a feminist? What is a feminist? Feminist is a woman-identified woman. Are you different than the National Organization of Women Who Hate Men? Are you Ooh. the same kind of feminist? <laughs> I'm a member of, or I was a member of now, and really? I don't believe hating men is their goal. No, the National Organization of Women hate men. They I, hate the unborn. There are, of, there are men who are members of now. But they're weak. Those are girly men. Whoa, girly men. Oh, I love it. They would not like to hear you say that. Why not? <laughs> you may have a fight on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> girly men. I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> a real man would never be a part of a feminist Okay, now you tell me what a real man is. A male who loved God with all his heart, soul, and might, along with nothing else. And so he's guided by that. He's guided by what is right. Do you like the authority that's been given unto men by God? That would be patriarchy, and no, I'm not real thrilled with patriarchy. Why not? Because I think it was wrong a lot of the time. So God was wrong by that? Well, Okay, God gave it. God made it. Made a mistake. If that's if that's. But really you said true. God made no mistake. I mistakes. think I think man just assumed the authority and said that God had given it to them. But you say God made no mistake, so He gave that to to the man that authority. It wasn't a mistake there, right? It was the right thing to I do. I said I think men assumed that God had given that authority to them and they took it. I don't know if that necessarily God did. Who do you think that God gave it to? If He didn't give it to women, women don't have it. But men do. We notice that oh, men do. I Unless it's a girly man. <laughs> but, uh, Professional. Do you believe in good and evil? Sure. Good and evil. Abortion. Good or evil? Oh, good. Good. Abortion is good. Mm -hmm. Why is it good to take the unborn life? Well, I don't know that that's necessarily the good part of abortion. All right. I think abortion, abortion is necessary. Well, first of all, what's good about abortion? So you agree it's not good to take an unborn child's life, well, right? Well, you're using language I wouldn't use. 
okay? Right. All right, let's just cut to the chase on this. God had the good sense to create women as child bearers. And he, or she, made them moral agents. Women have moral agency, absolutely. God-given moral agency. Now, why is it that we don't trust women with something that God indeed did trust women let with? Me, let me go back to the question of, is it, you agree that it's not good to take the life of an unborn child. That's not a good thing, right? It's a necessary thing. Is it a good thing? I don't know. You say you in understand some, good. In some, in you some are, context, come on, you it are probably a reverend. is. You are a reverend. Mm -hmm. You say you were called by God. Is God good? Sure. And so you and I agree it's not a good thing to take an unborn child's life. I'm I don't use that language. Right, but I'm, I'm, I'm asking you that. Is it good? You said no, it's no, not good, it's right? Not good. And so if women are so smart, as uh, you just indicated, why would they make that type of decision to do evil to an unborn child? And this is the problem with feminism. Think tanks like the Council on Foreign Relations and demons like Margaret Sanger, they sanction these publicized satanic philosophies that suggest women are smarter than men, they mature faster than men, they're more spiritual than men. Okay, they publicize these lies. Okay, and they establish the welfare state as a safety net <laughs> for these women who so fabricates these lies as public witchcraft. When a spiritual man can discern how these abominations run in covenant with demons. Because their life dictates that that needs to be the decision they make. What does that mean? Most women are doing it because of the career. Oh, now, wait a minute. Or they hate the man. Or <laughs> the baby's in the way. Who do you hang out with? It was a mistake. <laughs> so where oh, is the good common goodness. sense in that? Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Um, women are not bimbos. Okay. But why would they make a good, uh, uh, evil decision? You and I agree that's, that taking an unborn child's life is not good. That's your value being projected onto them. The women I talk to who have a crisis pregnancy are faithful, loving, kind, generous women who are in a very, very difficult situation. But they don't lives. love their unborn child. That's not Those true. Those who commit abortion. They don't because if they did, they wouldn't do evil to an unborn child. Huh. Isn't that right? No. Absolutely not. That's not right? What if they have five other children and they can't possibly take on a sixth one? They can put it up for uh, adoption. They don't have to kill it. Half of the a children good in person the would make that decision. Half of the children in the California juvenile justice system are adoptees. So don't talk to me about how wonderful adoption is. And that's a reason to kill them. If we have a pro-life culture of substance here, there wouldn't be 12,000 kids available for adoption today in Los Angeles County. Is that a reason to kill the unborn child? Not a reason. No. But why are you bringing that up? Because we get all excited about fetuses that have potential life for sure, but not real life yet. And yet we don't think a thing about all of these kids who are already here, who are not living the American dream. But you still agree with me that's not a reason to kill the unborn child, right? <sighs> that's not what I said. It's, it, it, the reasons to have an abortion are purely that of the individual woman. Let me ask, would a, a woman who is born again of God, she is a daughter of God, and God is good, would she commit an abortion? Would sure. she kill her unborn child? Sure, it happened. And the penalty for you and the foolish women who follow in your footsteps will be eternal death. The demons will rip you open, rip open your wombs, and flood acid down your throats. Okay, and your slave master forefathers who raped our mothers will be explicitly violated by the demons. The scripture states, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But this foolish lady does not know the Most High and has had way too much time on her hands listening to the voice of the serpent. It happens. Um, let's go to homosexuality. Ooh. It's very prevalent I can now. hardly wait. <laughs> We've already got the girly man out there. So. <laughs> now we're going to the worst. 
Oh, um, it's going to get worse? Oh, no, dear. No, All I'm, right. I'm just I'm kidding. Let me ask, uh, homosexuality is that of God? Sure. Did God create the, the spirit of homosexuality? You bet. He did, and why? It's part of the human condition. Why would he create that? Why not? Don't tell me why he would, because homosexuals are suffering. I just read a report recently that uh, most of them uh, have all sorts of diseases. They are alcoholics. They're drug addicts. They're very unhappy. Uh, they are confused about true. who they are. Why would God do that to them? No, I, don't, I think our culture has done that to them. I don't think God did anything to them. And how did our culture do that to them? Oh, my goodness. The Presbyterians have spent the f last 40 years fighting this battle, trying to make these people conform to what their, thought, their expectations of homosexuality are. And it didn't work. And um, I'm glad. I mean, I, I, I think that it, homose homosexuality happened. And these are still children of God. Okay, I'll wrap it up here. You can clearly see where feminism leads. She supports almost every godless, abominable act. Okay, so stay tuned. I will break down the accumulation of sin in the next video.